Hi, Jeff Lawton here. Well, I'm here at Naima's Garden in Jofa, Jordan. Well, I'm actually in Kafrain near Jofa. And I've got the students here from the internship here at the one month internship. And we've got a guided tour going on by the lady herself out there in the garden. And we're gonna join in and listen to what's being said. So this is your man, our translator, our local permaculture architect, well experienced around the world with permaculture. And I've got Naima, the lady herself. She's gonna ask, I'm gonna ask a few questions. She's a bit shy, but she's gonna tell us what she knows about this beautiful event. So how long have you had this garden? How much have you produced? Like, what, how much do you produce? Enough to, to feed your family and sell produce? كم كمية ال الغذاء اللي عم بيطلع من هاي المزرعة هل هو كافي لتغذي عائلتك وكفاية حتى تبيعي كمان؟ الحمد لله في اكتفاء ذاتي وفي فائض من الإنتاج بعمل منه مردو للبيع كمان. She has self resiliency here and a surplus of the yield that gets sold all the time. So can she just give us, I know there's a lot here, but what exactly is she producing? Can she give us the full list? ممكن تعطي قائمة في المواد اللي انت بتنتجيها هون البتنجال Eggplants البندورة Tomato فلفل حار Chili فلفل حلو Capsicum البصل Onions سبانخ نوعين Spinach, two kinds of it الكوسة Zucchini يعني تقريباً البندورة يعني تقريباً أكثر الخضروات أنا بس Most of veggies are grown on this land. And I see a lot of um, uh, oregano. زعتر كمان عندي. زعتر نعنع ميرمية. Mint, uh, sage. Um, uh, الخيار والبطاطا جربت تجربة بسيطة. Cucumber and potato as well. And and uh, you've got. Uh, Lohia. Molohia, which is Lohia. Egyptian spinach. A lot of people might not know that one. You've got Brazil spinach, the perennial sis, uh, uh, Anthera sisu. And, and you've got this beautiful climber. Uh, that's uh, Sabanakh. So they grow all through summer? Yeah. And they're an edible vine too. Yes, yeah. Yes. All through the year. And you normally have a cover over, is that only in summer? Uh um Yeah, wicking beds at the end. You have eight little wicking beds. They they are even better in summer with the with the water underneath. بيحكي لك في عندك ثمان أحواض وكين بيد هم أحسن في في ال في الشتاء في الصيف عفوا مع الغطاء اللي عليهم والمية اللي تحت. آه آه تكون كويس كتير وفي عنا كمية المياه كمان قليلة ما مستهلك كثير ماء وكونه منطقتنا ما فيهاش يعني ال المية السلطة بتنزلش كثير. أحيانا يا دوب بالشهر مرة أو كل أسبوعين مرة. And she's putting wicking beds into schools. وبتحطي هاي اللي تخوت في في المدارس كمان. آه مشتغلنا عليها على المدارس وبعض الأهالي كمان. So this was solid rock and now we've got production. So that's obviously surprised a few people. بيحكي هاي كانت صخر وهلا فيها إنتاج فهذا أكيد كان مدعى للتعجب من كثير ناس. آه كثير تعجبوا كيف إني قدرت إني أعمل الإنتاء الأزرع هاي الأرض وكانت صخر لأنه الكل بيعرف إنه هاي. مستحيل أنا لما كنا نشتغل نروح عند الأهالي ونحكي لهم اعملوا كذا وسووا كذا بحكي لنا احنا منطقتنا صخر فبحكي لهم تعالوا في عندي أكبر مثال كيف كان الصخر الموجود عندي أكبر من الصخر الموجود عندهم يعني بيكون مكان صغير وصخر صغير فأنا تقريبا مترين ثلاثة متر كان الصخر عندي والحمد لله تلاشيت هذا الإشي وعملت المشتل عندي That's the starting point over there that's what it looked like So most of this is from fertilizer from the chickens, yeah? I have to use compost in the jars. I have to use a compost every year. I have to use it for the food. I started to use it for the Ford Forest. I have to use it for the food. I also have to use it for the food. We have a little bit of a little bit. We have a little bit of a compost. The compost and the milk help us to reduce the amount of milk. You have enough food to eat and you have some to sell. And you've got eggs as well. And every now and again, extra chickens. عندك أكل بكفيكي 
دجاج وبتبيعي منه وكمان دجاج وبيض اه عندي اكل بكثير الحمد لله وفي الفائض بضيع منه وفي عندي كمان بيض و يعني ما شاء الله وضع اكتفاء ذاتي وفائض عن الاكتفاء So the chickens food subsidized quite a lot with the compost. You don't have to feed them so much. إنك بتضيف الطعام للدجاج هذا بخفف من استهلاك. إنه أشتري إلو أعلاف أو إشي في كل فضلات الطعام بضيفه للدجاج. لا أنا بيع طبيعتي بحبش أشترى إشي من برا بحب أستخدم الإشي الموجود في عندي حواليا وبأرضي. فكل إشي بعيد استعماله من داخل الأرض ومن حواليا من الجيران. مثلا الملش بستخدم ورق الموز ما يعني بس لأنه آه آه ورق الموز من عند جيران بيحرقوه حرق فأنا بدل ما يحرقوه يعملوا تلوث للبيئة بروح بجيبه من جنبي وبشتغل فيه. I know the viewers are really interested to see the uh, food, uh, the the school garden that she's been helping with and producing. So hopefully she can show us the school garden soon and we can make another film. Would that be all right? She'd be pleased about that. بتحب تورجيهم بعدين المدارس اللي عم تشتغل عليها إن شاء الله. إن شاء الله إن شاء الله. Yes, for sure. She'll be happy to. Alright. Thanks. All right, cheers guys. So we're here at one of the local schools where Naima is working on school gardens. It's just small projects, little by little. Let's have a look over this way. You'll see they're just about to leave for, the, for their lunch break, but come on through and let me show you what's been going on. We do have little gardens, but we particularly have the wicking bed. So we have two wicking beds. This is what's been really successful. These very simple wicking beds where you water from above and it goes down to a tank full of gravel underneath. And capillary action keeps the soil damp. So it's minimum water use. These kids have a school here which water has to be delivered. It's delivered every day. So these kids, so I know some of these kids. Jamal. Hi. Yeah. Hey. Hello. Yeah. How are you? Good. Oh, look. We know them all. Hello. How are you? Good. Salam. Hello. Salam. 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 Opti. Salam. Salam. Okay, so these are the guys, they're learning this stuff. They're learning this is smelly, this is basil, this is tomato. God, I've got to shake everybody's hand. Hey, Bissa? Hey? Salam. Salam. Bit cautious. All right. So we have a, a mixture here of tomatoes, we have capsicum, we have new seedlings always being planted, it never goes empty. Right? They're learning about water, a little bit of onion. It's not a perfect garden. They're not learning to be perfect. They're learning how they can garden appropriately with minimum water, minimum care, but continuous production. It doesn't take a lot of work for this to be continuously producing. They're learning basic garden skills. So this is a, a simple wicking bed system. I can see the overflow. Here's the overflow point. The water fills to here, then it overflows. So it's, it, you can't have a system using less water. So let's come this way. Naima, Naima is the champion, not me. <laughs> so over here, we've got the beginnings of a little food forest. Muslim Made Australia, we've got to thank Muslim Made Australia for, for, for sponsoring all this. That's where the donations have come from. So we've given them extra water tanks, we've given them extra water delivery, and there was nothing here a few months ago, and we've started a mixed food forest. So we've got different citrus, and we've got olive. Over the back there, we've actually got a pomelo fruiting, and, and it's the beginnings of understanding food forest ecology. And uh, Naima's been, been uh, the champion here, she lives nearby with her successful garden. And this is how it's growing from school to school. Gadesh, how many schools? Gadesh? Uh, four. Four, four schools. Four right. and, and this landscape looked like that hill behind. That's the kind of landscape we're on. The, back, the background shows you the fertility we've started with. But little by little, 
the kids are understanding we can get production from any situation and we don't have to use much water or resources. It's simple stuff, but it's starting to work. We go from here all the way to universities now. Okay, we're at a neighbor's place now, and there's a bit of a dog in the background, but that's all right. And these wicking beds have been the influence of Naima, along with lots of interactions in the garden. So we've got bananas producing, fruit trees, interesting little gardens. We've had chickens involved. So it's a real expansion of food security. Let's go out to the front and show you this beautiful food forest edge that's been put into the garden as well. So we've got a whole establishment along the boundary edge here that Naima has influenced. And there was nothing here before. And there's all this mixture of food forest assembly. It's quite exotic, actually. There's really nice legumes, there's flowering plants, there's scented plants, there's climbers. It, it's just a, a proliferation of classic food forest type assembly. It's beautiful stuff, actually. It's really changed the urban landscape here. And right at the front gate, we've got a whole assembly of Moringa, which is just amazing stuff. And this is dense suburb. This is right in amongst the dense village urban landscape. We've got influences of permaculture just because Naima's success has extended out through the village. Okay, so here we are, we have another neighbor's property and there was nothing here originally. And it all started with introducing the wicking bed concept. Once we got these wicking beds in place, well, Naima encouraged this with her success all these gardens were started. So there was one or two old trees here, but the rest of it is all come in because the wicking bed started the process. People realized they could grow, they could get back in touch with growing their own food. And we've got all this food production started just from two wicking beds, inspiring people that there are easy ways you can garden. Actually, when you look around, there's new fruit trees, there's crops of broad beans, lima beans, where it was all just bare soil. This little bit of inspiration started this whole process. That's what it's about. Show people they can grow their own food again, show them it's worthwhile, show that you get a lot of hope and inspiration from it, and, the, and, and it just extends. It's extending through the village with each successful garden. So this is what I'm proud of, what Naima has been able to achieve with what we started. Really small beginnings end up being very, very, very useful systems to local people growing food, getting inspired and improving their health.